abroad. Yeah, he's not he's no longer in a in the Premier yeah. League. Yeah. Um there's something that is a bit of a mockery to the sports to the sports program, but I, I just found it funny. <laughs> Kim Kardashian. Um she's been seen, and I'm gonna use the word loitering around the players. Um now her son uh has been one of the mascots of one of the games in I think it was a I think it was a Real Madrid game. Uh, yeah. and I'm thinking that woman's got ulterior motive. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think she knows anything about football or interested in football. No, no. I, I think she's interested in the boys. <laughs> well, she probably is. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know much about the Kardashians except what you. I don't read the papers actually, so um, I can't even say I know from what I read in the papers. But yeah, I, I don't think I don't get the impression she will be a football fan at all. So there must be ulterior motives there. Yeah, perhaps. I think mean, yeah. So um, so on all the sports news that I've been reading this week, I've. I've been seeing her face, and I keep, I keep mistaking it for um, oh, what's that one that was dating this Formula One driver, Nicole Swaz Swazenga. Oh yeah, the singer. <laughs> yeah, and I've been mistaking yeah, it for the difficult. singer, and difficult I keep thinking, surname, who's this yeah. girl? Who's this girl? And and it dawned on me, it was Kim Kardashian, uh, yeah. and she's been hanging around Jude Bellingham. Now, one of my friends has a huge crush on Jude Bellingham. And I don't think she, she's going to like this. She's not going to like this at all, Trevor. What do we do Kim about Kim Kardashian. It? Yeah, hanging around. <laughs> hanging around her crush. Anyway, so um, back to the real football news. Uh, or the, yeah. real, the real football <laughs> program. <laughs> real football, yeah. Um, so the... The, the UEFA um, uh, Champions League draws, the draws, they're now going to be done um, via, um, what's it called? It's going to be automated now. And I don't quite like, I don't quite like that, Trevor. I don't like, uh, okay, so, uh, so I like the VAR. Yeah. It's good. Uh, but, I quite like the old method of, you know, the rolling thing and then you dip your hand yeah. and, you know, and, you know. I don't like this automated thing. I don't like it. It's not all of it, is it? Isn't it just the offsides that are automated? Um, I'm talking about the draws. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. I, yeah, uh, yeah, now I, I see what you mean. Yeah, where yeah. they put their hands in the bowl. Yeah, they put that. their hands in the bucket and they, you yeah. know. And now, well, that's automated, is it? Yeah. Wow. Well, next week's one is going to be automated. So starting from why is week, that? Why do you know? I don't even know. It's. I think it's everything. They, they try. The AI is trying to take over a yeah, um, game yeah. of football. You know, yeah. we, we love we love watching it. You know, the draws. Everyone sits in front of the television and you're watching it. You know, now yeah. there's going to be some computer going. You know, there's no fun in that, Trevor. You know, you want to. You know, you want to see how it's done. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I don't. For me, I don't think it's much fun watching it, except the one if you ever saw it, which Rod Stewart did. Did you ever see his one? No, I haven't. <laughs> Where he, <laughs> he clearly had a few sherbets, you might say, but it was so funny to watch. He he was exaggerating everything in a big way, wow. and as I say, it's probably on YouTube. But it's a brilliant one to watch, and of course, he is a a fully-fledged football fan anyway. But, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I don't know whether they think that somebody could cheat. I don't think they could cheat because they put their hand in a in a, in a a bowl where they can't see the numbers when they do that. So, yeah, and so I'm not sure what the point is. It, as you say, maybe there's something good and traditional about seeing somebody take the balls out. So, yeah, I don't know why they're doing it. Well, 
I don't I don't like it, Trevor. I don't like should we protest? No. No. Okay. Well. <laughs> no point, is there? No. It's, there's it decisions are made and we would protests won't make any difference. Look, yeah. the world is becoming ever more automated, isn't it? Yeah. And, and there's lots of very that's very good in lots of areas. Of course it is. And perhaps in others we prefer the old traditional ways. But at the end of the day, I suppose all the modern technology that take you know means life is that much easier and less hard labor for people. It's got to be it's got to be good, isn't it, really? Yeah. Yeah, now the PFA Awards um, for the ladies, for the women's one, was won by, I'm sure I had it. Now I can't find it. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that next week because we just want to talk about, but there's, there's yeah. this very, um, there's this very uh, interesting news about uh, Kylian Mbappe. Um, so I think it's, it's, there's been some, He's claiming that um, he's been done the dirty by PSG, um, and and he's he's actually complained to UEFA to look into it, and 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 the thing is, if if PSG is found guilty, um, mm. they could be looking at um, a hefty point deduction. Like, so what have they done to him then? I don't um, know what they've done. Right, so let me just see if I can find the article because I, I had it just, I had it saved. Um, so I think they owe him about 55. Right, okay, so Kylian Mbappe has reportedly, reportedly reported PSG to LFP and UEFA claiming they owe him 55 million in unpaid wages and bonuses. So, right. so uh, it's all about fifty-five money. million. Fifty—that's a lot. I mean, that uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, it sounds a bit un. Without knowing anything about that, it sounds a bit unlikely that a club would knowingly withhold that level of money owing to a player. I mean, it just sounds crazy, doesn't it? Yeah, well, fifty-five million. Does he explain? Is there any explanation how that could have come about? Um, I can't seem to find the article. I only just found the because I saved the article, but I can't um, I can't find it. But we'll talk about it again. Um, yes, but, we will. Yeah. yeah, it's just it just seemed like he's been um, he's been had done that sort of thing, you know? Because um, well. I, I, it'd be interesting to see the outcome of that, if you know what I mean. Um, I'd love to know how that pans out, and I'd, I'd I'd definitely go back to the article just to get the um, just to get the correct the details. background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just get the background to the story. Yeah, I'll have a look at that as well. And just and just get the uh, the, the the right details for it. Um, so there's Victor. Or Um I think Chelsea are willing to sign it. Chelsea, do you know? Do you know anything about that? Is it is it materialised yet? Anyway, there's rumours. No, I don't think it has. There's, yeah. Ken, the, the deadline is Friday, Friday evening at eleven o'clock. I think Friday this week, isn't it? So all transfers have got to be completed or started at least by then. So okay. there's not much. There's only a couple of days left for people to make these moves. But yeah. no, I don't know whether whether he's gone to Chelsea yet. I expect he will, but I don't know whether he has. Um, yeah. So he's he's in talks with uh, with Chelsea for that. Now that could be a rumor. I don't know. Mm. Like there's a lot of things online that um, aren't finalized yet, but people talk about it as if it's. Um, I don't know, mm. like there's a lot of things online that um, aren't finalised yet, but people 
talk about it as if it's um as if it's a done deal. Um yeah. yeah. Something that um that I don't think I don't think um Eric Ten Hag is gonna last this year. Really? Well, he lost to Brighton. Two one. Yeah, it was right at right at the end, wasn't it, as well? Yeah. So, you know, what is it what is it playing at? You know, because he's already on he's already on his last legs anyway, you know. So to then lose is, that is, sort of... <laughs> is he on his, is he really? Do you think that's how his position is at man? You're on his last legs? I, I wouldn't think so. Do you know? Right. Okay. Well, I know it was last season, but then of course he beat Man City in the FA Cup, and that restored a lot of his, uh, you know, lost respect from the board, etc. Yeah. I, this is why I question his move for Sterling, Raheem Sterling. I, I don't think that would be seen by too many people as a a great transfer for Manchester United. I mean, this is Man United, one of the best teams yeah. in the world. I, I still think, I mean, you can't judge him, I don't think, on one game. Brighton, Brighton are not a bad side. Uh, they've got a new manager, a uh, new impetus, therefore. I, I was surprised that Man U did lose that. It was in the 92nd minute, I think, or something like that, wasn't it, that the goal was scored. So yeah. it, was, it looked like it was heading for a draw. But no, I think much will depend on the next few games. And if they were to lose you know, three or four of the next half dozen games, then I agree with you. They won't, They will part company. But you've got to give him a few games before thinking that. I, I just felt that the board, the owners, sort of reset his position. They re-established their faith in him. And for my part, well, I, don't, I don't know really, but as an outsider looking on, but I just have a feeling he's a good football man. He knows his stuff. He's... Um, He's not arrogant, and I'm sure he can be quite tough on the players when he needs to be, which is, which is a good thing. So as a manager, my my impression is that he he's good. He's a good manager. So I, I hope he he's still there at the end of the season. But much will depend, like most other clubs, much will depend on what Man United do. I mean, the days in really are gone where a club would yeah. give a manager, you know, uh, a year or two years to sort it out. Um, I mean, when Alex Ferguson went to Man United in the late late eighties, I think it was, he didn't win anything for four years. Now, and he reckoned he always said that if he'd lost a particular game, it may have been a cup game, they would have sacked him at that point. But fortunately, they they scrambled a win, whatever game that was, right at the end. And he said that saved him because, of course, then he went on to win all these trophies year after year for many years. But, yeah, they don't get that time now. It's all about results. If you lose half a dozen games, particularly on the trot, then pretty much you're out. Yeah, that's, that's the it. tough. But then they're rewarded well if they succeed. So it's a high-risk job, <laughs> but it's high reward as well. So, you know, high risk, I, high reward. I only, I only need their salary. To survive for ten years, <laughs> just one month. Would be nice. <laughs> That'd be to enough. Do a for job me. like that. That'd be yeah, enough to for do a job ten years. Yeah, yeah, man. Right, um, Trevor. Do you want to do the conclusion on this one? Yes. Well, okay. We've had an interesting discussion. I hope we we've missed our our man Femi. He's not been able to be with us this week, but his son, I gather, is having a football trial today. So we wish him well with that. But we've we've touched on a few interesting points. Hope you found them as such. And we look forward to being with everybody next week. So I, I am Trevor Gear, and he calls me Cuz. And I'm Emmy Hickins, and he calls me Bruv. And it's uh, goodbye from me. And goodbye from me.